In this video, we're going to be talking about credit scores, starting off with what is a credit score. You can think of your credit score as your debt grade. You're being graded on how well you handle your credit when institutions lend you that money. The higher your score, the less risky you appear to a lender. Credit scores can range from 300 to 850, with 300 being a terrible score and 850 being a perfect score. According to Advantage Score, the average credit score in the United States is a 700, which falls in the good category. We will break down the different credit score ranges here shortly and what is considered good and bad to a lender, so stay tuned for that in another video. But first, let's talk about how the credit score is calculated. Credit bureaus like Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion all have different algorithms they use to analyze and come up with your credit score. But they focus on five key factors that determine your credit score. These five key factors are as follows. Number one, payment history. This makes up 35% of your credit score, which is over one third of your total score. So it's the largest factor contributing to your credit score. Lenders feel that past performance is indicative of your future habits. So if they see that you are paying off your loans in a timely and consistent manner, then they're gonna give you a higher, better score because they're saying, hey, well done, you have good payment history. So since payment history makes up such a large percentage of your credit score, it's super important to make sure that you are current on all of your bills and loans. This means student loans, car loans, credit cards, and any other personal or revolving lines of credit that you may have open. Factor number two, credit utilization. This makes up 30% of your credit score, so another big chunk of your credit score. This is the amount of credit that you are using divided by the amount of credit that you have available. For example, if you have a $10,000 limit on your credit card and you currently have a balance of $5,000, then your credit utilization rate will be 50%. You're using half of the credit that you have available. You wanna keep your credit utilization rate as low as possible. The most obvious way to do this is to make sure you pay off your credit cards in a timely manner to keep the balance low. Sometimes you can make multiple payments per month. If you had a large charge that you racked up near the beginning of the month, then make an early payment to pay off this big expense quickly and get your credit card balance back down to a normal amount. This will help keep your credit utilization rate down. This could be the case when buying some furniture, for example, maybe you bought a large couch, or maybe you had a large medical bill recently you had to pay for using your credit card. These are one-time big expenses that aren't likely to happen again in the future that make your credit utilization rate go up for the time being until they get paid off. So you wanna get these paid off as quickly as possible when you use your credit card to make these kinds of purchases. Therefore, consider keeping your credit utilization rate low by making multiple payments per month or early payments per month on your credit cards to get these balances paid down back to normal, reasonable levels where you'll have a low credit utilization rate. Another way to keep your credit utilization rate low is to make less purchases with your credit card. Instead, substitute in a combination of making purchases on your debit card as well as your credit card, or forego making payments for a short period of time on your credit card and strictly focus on paying them with your debit card so that you can make sure that credit utilization rate stays down boosting your credit score if you're trying to get a loan here in the near future. Now, a debit card, however, doesn't offer rewards like a credit card, so for many of you that are good about paying on time each month, it might make sense to try to make these purchases on a credit card because you're racking up these rewards. So a lot of companies offer incentives for paying off your card each month in full, so if you're good about paying off your card in full, you might as well take advantage of the free points, the free gift cards, the free travel, you know, the cash back reward programs that these different credit cards are offering. The next factor that is going to impact your credit score is the average length of credit. This makes up 15% of your credit score, and it's just as it sounds. It's 
how old are your different types of credit that you currently have? So if you opened up maybe a student loan 10 years ago, that's gonna be 10 years old. If you opened up a credit card in the last year, that age of credit is only going to be one year old. So it's gonna look at all the different types of credits that you currently have available to you, and it's gonna look at how long you've had those credits available, what the ages of each credit line is, and it's gonna come up with an average age of credit. So this is gonna impact, again, 15% of your credit score. It can be frustrating for those of you that are newer to using credit. You're not going to have as high of a credit score yet because this might be the factor that's hurting your credit score, having a lower age of credit history as opposed to someone else who's been using credit for 30, 40 years and has a really high average age of credit, then they're gonna see more of a benefit to their credit score. Factor number four, new credit. This makes up 10% of your credit score. New credit covers the action of taking out new loans. When you take out new loans or even apply for them, it signals that you may be in financial trouble and this appears in your credit score negatively. If you are getting ready to be pre-approved or apply for a new line of credit like a credit card, I would wait until after you close on your real estate investment property so that it doesn't affect your property loan. When applying for new credit, always ask them first if they're going to do a hard or soft pull. A hard pull, also known as a hard credit inquiry, will reduce your credit score, whereas a soft pull, known as a soft credit inquiry, will not affect your credit score. In the case of applying for a mortgage, a hard pull will be inevitable with no way to avoid it. Therefore, if you're shopping around for different mortgage rates, it's recommended that you do all of them within the same 30-day window of each other. As long as you request interest rate quotes during the same four-week period, the damage to, done to your credit score will be very minimal, considering the fact that they only count these credit inquiries as one hard pull. If you went out and talked to five different mortgage lenders, they're not gonna count them as five hard pulls. It's only gonna count as one hard pull if you did them all within this 30-day window. So it doesn't negatively affect your credit score that much. Hard pulls typically might drop your score maybe five points. But if you have multiple hard pulls, then this could affect your credit score further. So for example, if every six months you go try to apply for a loan, this is gonna create a hard pull on your credit history and that's gonna negatively impact your score. And if you're repeatedly getting lots and lots and lots of hard pulls, this will continually drop your credit score more and more to the extreme. So it's important to make sure that you try to get soft pulls when possible and avoid hard credit pulls. And factor number five, credit mix. This makes up the remaining 10% of your score. So a credit mix could be, for example, having student loans, having a mortgage, having a car loan, having home equity loans, and maybe some open credit cards or an open personal loan with a bank. So these are all different types of loans and lines of credit that you may have, which could be boosting your credit score because you have a good credit mix. However, it's a gray area because purposely having all these loans just to help your credit score may not very, be very wise since it affects your debt to income ratio with a lender, hurting your chances of getting a real estate investment loan, and also by having different high amounts of debt, you can add stress to your finances with having much of your income having to be funneled off to pay down these debt payments each month, leaving little cash for you to save away towards your investing, towards retirement, or towards saving a down payment for the purchase of real estate. For those that do have multiple types of debt and have shown that they can pay off multiple types of debt on time, will indicate that you can handle all types of debt and this will improve your credit score. So take the metric with a grain of salt. It only counts as 10% of your total score. So whether you have a good mix of credit or not, it's not something super huge to stress about. All right, so after considering all of these different factors, the three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion will each provide you with a credit score. The credit score will range between 300 and 850, and as I mentioned at the beginning, the higher your score, the less risky you look to lenders, and the more likely it is that you will be able to get a loan as well as a low interest rate on the loan. Lastly, don't be alarmed if the scores are different from all three companies. 
a lot of times the three reporting bureaus come up with the scores using their own calculations and algorithms to where they vary by a couple of points from each other. So you might see a 750, a 753, and a 757, and it's gonna be kind of confusing why they're different, but that's just how it is with how they compute the scores differently from each other. However, if you notice that one of the scores varies drastically, like a 730 compared to the other two that are 750 and 753, then you might wanna check with that one company that has the low credit score and see what could be on your credit report that's affecting your score. Maybe they didn't realize you paid off a student loan recently, and so they're still counting that against your credit, and this is what's hurting your score. Uh, and if you get on the phone with them, you call them up, you get it corrected, then that should bring that score back up in line with the other two scores. All right, so that's our introductory video about credit scores, what they are, and what factors contribute to the credit score. Now, as mentioned in the next upcoming videos, we're gonna talk more about the different score ranges. If you have a 300, a 400, a 500, what's considered good scores for lenders? What do lenders require in terms of a credit score to get a real estate loan? So make sure you check out those videos.